Welcome to yet another bombastic, exciting, illuminating edition of the Glory Kickboxing official podcast. I'm Todd Grisham. He, of course, is Joseph Voltolini with absolutely nothing in the background. He is in a Canadian prison cell for all we know. How you doing, how did, buddy? How did I know you were going to go that? The first thing I knew you were going to say. Well, You're getting I, too predictable. You got to change it up now. You got to try to pick on something else. Could you hang just could you hang like a My Little Pony poster in the background or something? I don't have anything. What about a nice Todd Grisham? Like anything. one from WWE, one from your UFC, one of me and you together. Justin we'll do Bieber. The Todd and Joe. You're Canadian. You can put Bieber trips, stuff back there. Collage. We'll do a collage of mine and your little trips. You sent me a picture yesterday. I, did, I sent a picture of, uh, you know what, why don't we put it up right now? This is a picture that you and I took uh, the very first time we hung out together. I believe we were in Amsterdam, and we've yeah. been. Uh, you, you've been one of my top 500 friends ever since. Yeah, we're going back to Amsterdam, so we have to take a similar picture. And yeah, then maybe that right. can go right here on my wall. Hey, and congratulations, man. I know, uh, what, about a couple weeks ago, you celebrated about a year being yeah. a commentator for Glory. How are things going? Give me give me the, the best part of being a commentator for Glory and the worst part. All right, let's start with the best. Well, I think the best is hanging out with you and traveling, and we get to hang out with Whitney, um, which makes it a little bit more pretty. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's been, uh, I think, traveling and just being part of the sport at the highest level. And, you know, I'm getting to see the world traveling and just watching my sport and seeing all my friends who I've created relationships with along my fighting career at Glory. So that's always cool. But the most challenging will be commentating friends. And most of these guys are my friends. And um, I recently uh, received a message that said, go fuck myself, which was nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I've lost friends because they take my commentary too seriously. They take it like personal, and I don't understand. I'm my job is to be, you know, unbiased. I have to sit there and call the fights, but the fighters are just getting way too sensitive over the words I say. Maybe because we're friends and they expect me to be a little bit more biased. But man, a go f yourself wasn't good. So it was a go f yourself because they thought you were basically shitting on their performance or because you didn't maybe. pick them to win what maybe, was it i guess i don't know maybe we'll, i'm trying to get answers but that's the only answer i really got you, but you don't seem too mad about it you know what would high school joseph voltolini have done to this oh, guy? high school joe would be different now i just think it's funny it's professionalism guys like you're professional athletes we're i'm a professional commentator like it's just part of our job you do what you have to do i have to do it what I have to do, and let's all be friends at the end of the day. Are you going to name names? Are we going to hear a name? Who dropped I've it? I lost a few friends. It's not just one. It's really? multiple people who get upset about it. Wow. I don't get it. Well. It's an opinion. I think you're doing a good job. Hey, I, I don't make the decision on what happens. It's the, it's the judges and the referees. I'm just calling what I see. Right. And I, I probably put you – I wouldn't say I put you in bad positions, but I ask oh, you, you questions. Do. definitely do. <laughs> no, I ask you questions. You can't just say – like I'm like, who won that round? You can't just say, well, I'm not going to answer that. Your job is to give to your give an opinion. opinion. Yeah. yeah. And so I don't know why they get all sensitive, but I think they have more internal, uh, you know, issues and in mental issues. Insecurity. 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 That's the word. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, know. you know, here's what I've always the mantra I've always lived by in broadcasting: just don't be boring. Right, That's, I agree. So, like, you know, what's the point of you just getting up there and just telling us what we already know and being bland and not, you know, going out on a limb? No one wants to hear that. I agree. So, what's your hardest part? I know the best part, but what's the, the well, hardest? Well, well, what's the best part? Well, hanging out with me. Come uh, on, you know, you got to give him a cheesy answer after no, we show that picture. To me, the best part is those uh, the Michael Duke Daniel Lunga type fights where you mm -hmm. just you lose yourself. Like after that fight was over. People were asking me about it, and I was like, I really don't even remember what I said. I think we just yelled the whole time. Just, well, I mean, what else could you do? One guy gets knocked down, you're trying to collect yourself, then the next guy, he gets knocked down. And it was just, just those big, holy shit moments that you just get lost in, where you just become a fan. You just take your, your broadcaster's suit off, throw it on the floor, you put on your Spuds McKenzie Coors Light t shirt, and you just start screaming at the TV. I mean, that's. Those are the great moments. As far as the bad moments, you know, fan interactions, you know, people writing you on Twitter and saying, go fuck yourself, you suck, you're the worst, you don't know anything about MMA, you don't know anything about kickboxing. The you're keyboard not a, warriors. Or you're not, a, you're not a true fan. Like, what is a true fan? Do I have to know every statistic about every fighter ever? Apparently. Or does it Apparently. matter that I was at UFC 14 in 1997 in Birmingham, Alabama, watching Mark Coleman fight Maurice Smith? 
Is that that makes me a true fan? What about you sitting at home? You probably never even been at a live event in your this life. This is a touchy subject. Yeah. I post videos on all my social media, and I get random people trying to critique my technique. Why don't you pivot enough? Like you should probably, you know, slip over this and do that. I was like, really? Yeah. But it's all right. That's what keeps our job. Yeah. We need the haters too. Well, I was when I called my last UFC event. It was. I mean, I'm on the air for six and a half hours with Brian Stan, and I said something along the lines of, like, you know. Who doesn't love the sport of UFC, blah, 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 blah. Well, of course, I meant the sport of MMA. UFC is an MMA organization. But people are like, he doesn't even know the fucking difference between UFC and MMA. What an idiot. I'm like, no, wait a second. I'm talking for six and a half straight hours. Sometimes I'm going to misspeak on things. It happens in life. Okay, so See, now, now you got me going. You Why are you getting me so excited? I'm going to do what you do to me. I'm going to do what you do to me. All right. I'm, you're friends with me and you're friends with Brian Stan. So, Todd... Give us the performance, and who is the better color commentator? Who's better? You or Brian you're Stan? You're on, yeah, you're on the spot now. Wait, hold on a second. My dog, my dog Pele is all riled up about something. What's wrong, old buddy? Oh, you hear a Canadian? Yeah, he's here for the answer because he's going put you on the spot. Attack him. Would you say who's better? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's two different sports, first of all. I think. Oh, okay, uh, now you're giving the political answer. Oh. You're going, you're doing the runaround like I would try to do on TV. Who looks better on camera? Joseph Altolini by far. Sharp dress band, nice smile when you when you want to use it. The hair is always on point as it is right now. I Thank mean, you. uh. Oh, I, I, would you just, say I got it's, you, eh? I would See, say it's, it's not close. that easy when you ask me. Cat's got your time. All right, well, who's better? Who's better, me or Mauro Ronaldo with you? Mauro Ronaldo. All right. Well, hey, I want to thank everyone for watching this podcast. I Am I going to get a text message now? Am I getting <laughs> a text message? Go fuck yourself. <laughs> uh, well, that's pretty good. Yeah. Thanks, good. friend. Huh? You got all sensitive on me now. No, I didn't. I didn't get so, Are those insecurities coming out now? No. no. Mar Ronaldo has been calling MMA and kickboxing for 20 some good. odd years. Right? You guys are both good. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And I look better on camera, do I not? If you tell me he's better looking than me, then we have some serious, serious issues. <laughs> well, your hair's better. It seems to be styled a little nicer. Oh, my God. All right, let's move on. We got Glory 41 coming up in Holland. Main got event, it. Rico Verhoeven versus Ismail Lazar. And the more I'm getting to know about Ismail, he's a complete goofball, first of all. He can't speak two sentences without starting to laugh. He's that yeah. kind of guy. But from the footage I've seen... He's a bulldog, man. He's kind of like a 280-pound a Robin Van Roosmalen. I mean, he gets inside, tries to land those big hands. And if he connects on Rico, it could be game over. It could be. I mean, I've been watching some of his older fights, and you got to look at the guys he's fighting. Like, even from the press conferences, like, the height difference is crazy. Um, but he's got punching power. And that's all he can really do is get that punching power. And... But I don't know, man. The more I watch, okay, let me ask you this question. The more you watch, do you give Lazar um, more an advantage? Um, not more an advantage, a, bit, a better chance. Yeah, than when I first saw him. And when you I, first saw it. I first saw him, I was like, he's going to get blown out. And he still might. I, I'm not saying I'm picking him to win. I haven't seen the odds to this fight yet, but I'm sure they're going to be at least 10 to 1 for Rico, and they should be. But Rico's very confident, and he's getting borderline cocky now. Which is a good thing because you're the you're king of kickboxing, champion of the world. But I mean, Lazar's the type of guy that can, you know, maybe light him up if he if he catches him just right. Yeah, I think so. You I know? mean, that's the heavyweight punching chance. I think a three rounder would have been a little bit better for Lazar. Um, I think you could have put the, a little bit more advantage on his side if it was three rounds. But five rounds, Rico's used to five rounds, and that makes it extra pressure and, and danger for Lazar, in my opinion. Yeah? Well, Lazar said, look, five rounds gives me five chances. But just looking at him, he doesn't look like the like he's in the best cardiovascular condition. But sometimes looks can be deceiving. Yeah, looks can be deceiving. But I just think Rico's just been so on top of the game. And look when Rico fought Botter. That was a three-rounder. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why they decided to go five rounds. Maybe it's to keep Rico um, in five-round shape. But... Yeah, I thought a three-round would have been a little bit more um, even playing ground for Lazar. I remember when Rico was uh, scheduled to fight Anderson Silva. And don't get me wrong, Anderson Silva's great, awesome, good veteran. But I remember thinking, there's no way Rico loses this fight. No way. And with Lazar, I'm still thinking Rico's going to win. But I'm thinking, 
I want to watch this because this guy's so unorthodox, so unlike anything Rico's used to seeing, maybe uh, it gives him problems. Yeah, I just think Rico's defense is really good, and that's the issue. He's not going to fight the game stupidly. He knows how to use his reach. He knows how to keep his distance. He stays really technical. It's going to be tough. And I feel if Lazar is going to land something, it's not just going to be the one shot. Like Rico's not really open to that one shot knockout. It's Lazar's going to have to hit him and keep following up and try to keep um, the pressure on. One shot, in my opinion, is not going to put Rico out. All right. So, uh, so you're going to go with Rico. Wow. Big stretch Whoa. there, Joe. I bet you don't get an FU text from uh, Lazar. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. There's a tons of fights, though, that I'm also excited for. Your boy Michael Dutes back, and he's fighting Marat Bouzidi, which is crazy. What's going to happen there? Is someone going to die? I'm going to have to call it death. Well, probably. <laughs> I think so. I can't even think of another answer. Probably. Bouzidi's tough, man. Bouzidi's – you got to think Bouzidi's fought Badr Hari. Bouzidi's fought Earl Zimmerman. Bouzidi's fought in heavyweight. He's fought the top of the light heavyweight. And Michael Dutes. Just scraps, man. You know that. I know it. It's you know it all too well. I've never, I've never seen a guy in, in boxing, UFC, whatever it is. I mean, there's maybe, maybe like Diego Sanchez in the UFC, but a guy like Michael Dude, who's like, I know I'm going to get hit several times in the face, extremely hard. I might get knocked out, but I don't care. I mean, defense. He doesn't care about defense. He's like, I'll well, he hit likes you. That though, huh? that's why he's probably one of your favorites in Glory. Would you put Dute as one of your favorites? I love watching him fight. Would I say he, if I was going to be a fighter, well, I'd want to be technically right. I love I love watching action. That's what that's what Glory is built on: three minute rounds, three rounds action. You got to hit the ground running. We have the no- highest knockout ratio in pretty much all combat sports. So we are mm-hmm. here for finishes, and I like guys that either finish or get finished. I can watch Michael Dute. Even if he has a record of 20 and 20, I don't care because his fights are going to be electric. It's going to be exciting. I agree. Yeah. So give me your best technical fight on the card of, of, of that a true kickboxing master like yourself can truly appreciate. Okay. The, uh, the technical fight that's really going to be the one to watch, I have to go with Robin Van Roosmalen and Pepana Maroon. Really? Mm-hmm. That's a technical fight, man. You have – it's going to be tough for Robin because Robin, I guess – you know, hates fighting these southpaw Thai fighters because he's had those two fights with Sidichai. But Panamurung's the same style, southpaw, left kick, counter kicks. It's going to be the same fight that was so frustrating that he had against Sidichai. He's going to have to use against Panamurung. But this time, he has a good size and weight advantage. So I think that's going to be the most technical fight on the card, easily, hands down. And yeah, who wins? Who wins? I'm going to go, honestly, Robin Van Roosmalen. Just his pressure fighting, his power, his size. But Panamarong's used to fighting at 115 pounds, 125 yeah, pounds. He's, he's little. Tiny. Yeah, where Robin's well, we, we asked, used to uh, fighting Pe- 155. We asked Pech Panamarong's trainer, uh, Adrian, that's his name, correct? Yeah. One asked of him managers, what he, yeah. And, you know, when a trainer really believes this fighter can win, he's like, oh, yeah. We asked him, and he's like, well, it's going to be a very difficult fight. So right. you, they he's know exactly realistic. what they're in for. He's realistic yeah, because well, it is. Anyone who fights Robin's yeah. in for a scrap. Now, would you agree with this? Robin said it. Uh, the translation's probably lost a little bit, but essentially he said he's a poor man Sidichai. He's like Sidichai, but he's not as good, and I've beaten Sidichai, so I know I'm going to beat this guy. Well, it's, it's a confidence he needs, and it's it sounds right. But Panamarung just it seems small to me, and I'm a guy who really values power. I, I value good physical shape and – um, aggressiveness, where I think Panamarung is going to just have to fight smart. Mm-hmm. It's going to be about fighting smart for him. And these ties are just so experienced that he does have the potential to shut down Robin. But I just think Robin's power, kickboxing IQ, and having fought top ties recently, I think I got to give the advantage to him. By the way, speaking of getting bigger, I know you said you wanted your uh, Canadian uh, bedfellow. Matt Embry to put on a little more muscle and weight. I see, I got a sneak peek at the New York City Madison Square Garden card, and I think Giga Chikatsi and your boy are going to be in the same tournament at Madison Square Garden. Is he going to be I ready? Know. I know, I know he's got, uh, he was in this four man tournament. I know Giga's in it, which I think is just exciting. Yeah. I think it's just that Giga's on a tear. Uh, you know, Matt Embry needs to really show himself again after Robin, and I think people are going to be surprised and shocked. Yeah. Um, 
Well, well, yeah. What's the, what's the what, featherweights, man? I'm pumped for this featherweight division. What's the what's the have. what's the especially featherweight? What's the what's the game plan? What's the blueprint to beat Van Roosmalen? Well, Van Roosmalen, you got to look, and it, it sounds easier than it is. It's like fighting Jason Wilness, that forward pressure style with good counter fighting. So the idea is to stay on the outside, stay long. Um, use movement. Don't let him corner you and stay against the ropes. You got to use angles. Keep turning them. Um, stay active because these guys stay with their hands here and then they wait to counter. If you're actively punching the defense, it keeps them pinned and you're constantly angling, never staying in front of them. That's the strategy. But it's you know easier said than done when you have a pressure guy who doesn't move, who constantly hits your legs every time you punch. This guy's kicking your legs and countering you right back. But the idea is stay long and use movement and, and angles on the outside. I can't wait. This is – I would say this year, is this the best card we've had? Probably so. It's up there. Yeah. It's up and there. And I mean Amsterdam environment, Holland environment is always amazing. Now, they support now, their, their local athletes and fighters so well. Now, it's going to be crazy. Uh, Myrtle Grunhart was supposed to fight Harut Gregorian. That Which fight is no fight longer. I was the most excited for. I'm not yeah. going to lie. But now it's it's Grunhart versus Alan Scheinson, the Argentinian, who's very well accomplished. Uh, yeah, he's good. Alan Scheinson's really yeah. good. How does he beat Grunhart? Or can he? Well, his style, we saw him um, fight Ben Mansour, and he lost the decision, but um, Scheinson looked good. I, I like Scheinson because he has a very similar good style of. Um, of kickboxing where he likes to use his boxing and his low kicks. I think his way is to really stay close to Myrtle and use his low kicks. I think that's the way he beats Myrtle. All right. Don't give Myrtle space. He's long. He's wiry. He's good that way. So stick to him and low kick him. I'm a big Myrtle fan. But even his trainer will say – his trainer says, listen, sometimes he's – when the fight isn't big enough for him, he kind of loses his edge a little bit. Hopefully that doesn't happen against Shine. He wants to tell he's pissed that he doesn't get the next title shot. He won the contenders tournament. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's without saying, if he wins this fight, then he will fight the winner of Nikki Holskin Nikki. versus Cedric Dumbay. Which is in Paris, which I'm excited for as well. Why wouldn't you be? Right? That's your well, division. Of course it's I am. It's a title for your division. I like, honestly, I'm I'm so intrigued by that fight, just seeing the way Doombay fights. I'm impressed. Everyone, I'm hey, impressed even the— I'm impressed by Doombay, man. He, I, I'm, he's probably, one right now, one of my favorite guys to watch in glory. Listen, I was talking to the trainers at Coliseum. I was talking to Mike Matt Passenier. And a lot of times these Dutch trainers, as far as foreign fighters go, they'll speak highly of them. But, you know, they'll always say, well, I got a guy that can whatever, whatever. Sure. I asked them about Doombay, and they were all like, man, that guy's really good. I mean, he's he really, really good. His move, I don't know, it's just tricky. Yeah. And it's the and the problem is everyone's so used to, like, Nikki's fighting always the same guy who gets in his face and tries to hit him and bully him. But Doombay took a different approach. He's like, you know what? Why am I going to fight Nikki what he's good at? Which sounds so simple yeah. and why everyone does it. But he has that style that he can switch stances, which takes away the low kick of Nikki. He constantly moves, good at distance, good at pinning Nikki's hands because Nikki's looking to counter punch all the time. Dumbay has the formula, and even what he did to Congolo was ridiculous. He right. made Congolo not even hit him. I can't wait for Paris. Me I love too. Paris. In fact, it's the city of love, is it not? Are we going to take a picture under the Eiffel Tower together? What I'm most excited about is me and Tim Hughes, the voice of oh. the Glory Ring, We'll be heading to a beautiful Tulip Festival next week in Amsterdam, and you're welcome to come with us, Joe. Oh, well, that's very nice. Yeah, Tim's good. We should get Tim on the podcast one day. Yeah, he's great, yeah. And tulips are my favorite flower, Joe, if you're thinking about something for Father's Day. Okay, it's Mother's Day's next. Friday. I know, but June's Father's Day. Maybe okay. you'll have a kid one day, and you'll understand these things. All right, man, any, any closing words, any closing comments before we uh, mosey on out of here? Uh, no, just keep watching. These shirts are online. BazookaKickboxing.com slash shop. Todd Grisham, make sure you get a haircut for Amsterdam, please. I am, I am. And uh, don't forget GloryShop.com, some really cool gear, some really uh, some new stuff that you'll like wearing. You know, represent. We need you guys to help us out so, and represent the and brand. And even subscribe to the, the Glory YouTube channel. There's constantly that inside. Right. Glory was pretty good. We got an inside scoop of Rico. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's cool to see that side. And even I didn't even know, but Rico's having another baby I saw which is cool, from the Inside Glory show. So, yeah, check them out. Follow and subscribe. All right, we'll see you guys next right, week good. in Amsterdam. 
Glory 41, Rico Verhoeven versus Ismail Lazar, and Robin Van Roosmalen versus Petch Panarung, Kiat Mukau. See ya!